Welcome to The Jay Martin Show. My guest today is the legend, Bob Moriarty. Now, Bob has been very outspoken recently about what he believes to be the true intentions of the World Economic Forum, making me very curious about his statements, and that's what we talk about today. So I hope you enjoy this. As always, there's a pinned comment beneath this video where you can subscribe to my weekly newsletter. I absolutely love writing it. I share my biggest takeaways and lessons learned from interviews just like this and plenty others. All right, here's Bob Moriarty. Enjoy. This is Jay Martin. All right, welcome to the Jay Martin Show. I'm sitting down with Bob Moriarty. And Bob, it's been like a decade since we last saw each other. So I'm really happy you could make the time and come on today. Well, I I, I did want to say to you, I, I said off mic and I should put it on mic. I hate you. <laughs> you. You have not changed a tiny bit in 10 years <laughs> i can debate that <laughs> i hope so i hope so i mean i hope not <laughs> all right look i want to jump right into uh some kind of deeper stuff let's just get into it because there's so many directions i want to take this conversation let's start with the world economic forum bob and my question for you is what is the role of the world economic forum uh that that's a a really good question. I don't think anybody has ever asked me, and I've never heard anybody answer. Uh, the World Economic Forum is a sorority of the rich and powerful, the one-tenth of one percent, and they want to control the 99 percent. And it is not a conspiracy, and I'm not right wing, and I didn't make this up. They they written about talk about great reset, and by 2030, you will own nothing, and you will owe nothing, and you'll be happy. Now, what is that? The definition of who, who owns nothing, owes nothing, and it's happy? I don't know anybody. Slaves. Happiness would be debatable then, but yeah. No, 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 no. You go to a slave and you ask him, are you happy? What's he tell you? I can only speculate, I suppose, but uh, you tell me. Yeah, I was a master. Absolutely, sure. master. I have never been so happy in all my life. Right, right, because right. Because you're a slave. And I, I, I'm not being facetious about this. They make no bones about it. Uh, Klaus Schwab, George Soros, Bill Gates, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds uh, intend to put all of the money and the power into the hands of the damaged crowd. And some of the stuff they're coming up with is so crazy. Uh, they had a meeting in Davos in, in March and 1,500 people flew their private jets into Switzerland to attend the meeting to discuss how private individuals really didn't need to own automobiles and private individuals should be eating bugs. I, I, I'll read something to you. I, I just saw it. It scared me so much I couldn't believe it. Uh, World Economic Forum wants to use AI to automatically censor speech on the internet. And here's what's beautiful. This isn't censorship after the fact. This is censorship before the fact. So you and I talk and we criticize uh, the World Economic Forum. What do they do? They cancel yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. Another I, I, one. I Canada, saw that article. Yeah, I think that the did, title was, was they're, they're focused on what they qualify as hate speech or misinformation. And the misinformation part is terrifying to me because who determines Right after all the information we've been fed during the last two and a half years during the pandemic, who's going to qualify what misinformation is? But that is what 
the World Economic Forum wants AI to censor before it reaches our eyes and ears, which well, is to say right. they'll force a narrative, right? Whatever narrative. They call it AI, but it's not AI. They just program it and they look for keywords and, and YouTube does this. Now, here's another good one. Canada announces digital identity program in partnership with WEF. And they've got Klaus Schwab with Justin Castro. They've got a picture of him. Yeah. Managing your cash through an inflation cycle is one of the most difficult things that money managers today have never had to deal with. It was the 1970s since we saw inflation numbers like we're seeing today. So there's no strategies tried and tested from anybody in the game that really work. I like gold, I like real estate, and a handful of other things. But one asset class that has held its value consistently over time, cycle in, cycle out, is fine art. However, if you're like me and know nothing about art, it's pretty hard to find your entry point. That's why platforms like Masterworks, which have essentially democratized access to artists that people like me could normally never afford, like a Picasso or a Banksy or a Van Gogh, I can invest in those masterpieces now through Masterworks. So there's a link in the description of this video. Check out Masterworks if you're looking to put some cash to work in one of the safest and best performing inflation hedges of all time. All right, back to the interview. Now, here's a question for you. There's a lot of alignment between our prime minister, I'm in Canada, as you know, and the World Economic Forum. And I wonder if this is almost one of the downsides of having a young prime minister. And I'm not to say we shouldn't have young prime ministers, but when you have somebody who's in their early 50s as the prime minister of Canada, they're thinking about their next career move. Now, I'm no fan of Biden, but he's probably not thinking about his next career move. Like, this is it. This is the swan song, right? Whereas Trudeau, he's gearing for a seat, right? At, within the World Economic Forum, so he's more likely to play ball to set himself up for the next two, three decades of his career, right? And I wonder about, about his, I mean, I don't wonder, I have my suspicions about his intentions as a consequence of politicians like anybody, right? They're, they're career-minded, professionally ambitious, maybe at all costs, right? And they're looking to better their situation. Uh, that's true, but it's actually meaningless at the same time. The World Economic Forum goes back to George Soros and Henry Kissinger, who got together with Klaus Schwab in 1971. Uh, th these guys have been planning this for a long time. Now, uh, Antifa, BLM, climate change, COVID, the war in Ukraine, monkeypox, it's all part of the same plan. Klaus Schwab brags on YouTube about having indoctrinated 3,800 people into his young global leaders. And that's actually brilliant if you think about it. You want to get these guys when they're young and they're malleable and you want to convince them to do things your way. Now, quite bluntly, the whole Davos thing You've got all these filthy, rich, beautiful people, the media, you've got actors, actresses there. It, it's a giant shell game, okay? They're sitting there agreeing with each other because everybody else is agreeing with each other. It, it's groupthink of the worst possible sort. Now, George Soros and Klaus Schwab and Bill Gates are evil people. There is a conflict now, and it's a conflict that's discussed in the fourth turning. In the fourth turning, every uh, 20 or 22 years, you have a turning, and the fourth turning is the crisis stage, and you can either go to full-blown totalitarianism, or you can go to freedom. Now, interestingly enough, the woman who runs New Zealand, she's been through the program. Mm. Justin Castro has been through the program. The leaders of the UK have been through the program. The leaders in, in the Netherlands have been through the program. And Schwab says he's infiltrated, and that's exactly the correct term, 
most of the governments of the world. And that's very scary because these people were never elected. There has never been any discussion of the plans of the World Economic Forum. So you've got all these people who have been elected to office and nobody's ever discussed this plan for 2030. Uh, some of it gets so crazy that the WHO and the UN have just come out and said, we need to look at uh, eating bugs. So the World Economic Forum, the one-tenth of one percent, are flying their jets into Davos. How many bugs do you think they eat? Yeah, none. Zero. Exactly. So it, it's uh, good for them, bad for us. This is a crisis. It's a conflict. Strange enough, Putin has been through the program, so Putin knows what the plan is. And believe me, uh, he's doing exactly the opposite. Let me ask you a question, Bob. So you mentioned, you know, Soros and Kissinger since the early 1970s have been planning this. Yeah. At, at the highest level, what is it that they're planning? Uh, they're planning on taking over the world. They're going to depopulate. That's what the whole COVID thing was all about. The purpose of COVID was not health. The purpose of COVID was control. So the United States creates this flu. The media hypes it as the worst thing that ever happened in the world. We we pay. Uh, Mo Modena was paid $2.6 billion to develop a vaccine. And then the head of Modena retired and collected a $926 million paycheck. I mean, this, this whole thing, it's so corrupt, okay? But we are at a critical turning point in history. It's very important for your listeners to understand. The, the debt based system of the West is finished, okay? There's $300 trillion in the world in debt. Can it be paid? No, of course not. Okay, thank you. Everybody with any sense understands it can't be paid. Now, under the Greek and Roman system and under the debt-based system of the West, that's been in control of the world since since 1492, all debts have to get paid or you lose your collateral. Now with $300 trillion in, in debt, it means that somebody's gonna end up owning the whole thing. And that's the World Economic Forum. Now the problem with it is that anytime you have an interest rate based debt financial system, you always have more debt than you have money. So if you go back to Babylonian times and early Israel, what did they do when they had a debt crisis? Probably diluted the money supply, I'm, I'm guessing. No, they had a jubilee. Okay, okay. Okay, because the king of Babylon looked at it and said, do we really want to kick the farmers off their farm? because they borrowed money and then they had a bad crop year. Do we do we want one person to control the entire economy? So they would have a, a, a jubilee and they would write off the debt. Now, strange enough, Biden just announced a program where they're going to forgive another five uh, billion dollars in student debt. But in the student debt in the United States, when the government forgives the debt, who has to pay it? Taxpayers. Thank you. It's that simple. So if you went to school and you owed $33,000, which is what happens on average, and you got out of school and you work at some minimum wage job and you can't pay it, Biden just said, you don't have to pay it. We get your mother and father to pay it. Okay. Yeah. We'll get your next door neighbor to pay it. Yeah. So what we're doing is exactly the wrong thing. Putin 
and the Chinese have gotten together. They've been buying gold for years, and there's a purpose behind that. And they're going to set up an alternative currency, which will be resource-based. Now, quite bluntly, they they keep talking about resource-based. It'll be some kind of pool of currencies, and that's bullshit. They're going to go to gold for the very simple reason. Every time you have a, a monetary crisis, gold is a great solution. It's been true for 5,000 years, and it's still going to be true. Now, the World Economic Forum would like to have a, a central bank digital currency. Uh, people confuse that. A central bank digital currency is not the same thing as a blockchain Bitcoin. But what it does mean is governments or whoever's in charge would know every single transaction you make. Everything would be uh, based on your digital identity. And if, if you dared speak up, they would just cut off your income. That's the more uh, dystopian outlook on that. I agree. It's the surveillance tool of a CBDC is something to be wary of. I question how much more surveillance they would gain from which they already have. But the more concerning part for me is the control aspect behind a programmatic currency that could be exactly erased from your bank account or maybe provided incentives to spend in a certain geographic location or um, discounted if it's not spent there. It could expire, right? If we're looking at things like universal basic income or some version of that, it's an easy way to sell it to the population. Look, we're going to contribute to your bank account on a monthly basis. Why wouldn't you love this system? You're going to get public buy-in. But here's the thing, the money expires, right? Or it discounts at 10% every three weeks. And so that's, you know, it's an easy way to control the activities of the population. The control element's horrifying to me. Um, now, well, look, uh, like... In, interestingly enough, and now you're coming right to, to the gist of it, everything they've done, the whole COVID thing was about destroying the economy. Now, if you look at what Biden has done with, with the pipeline, with the shutting off of, of oil and, and natural gas exploration on federal land, uh, with the open borders, uh, we're doing exactly the wrong thing. Now, there are riots from the farmers in the Netherlands. It's true in Italy. It's true in Spain. I predicted the first worldwide revolution in a book I wrote six years ago, and it's happening all over the world right now. And it, here's the fatal flaw. You can go to any history book, and the elite have always believed they should rule, but they're just as dumb as you and I are, okay? <laughs> and they always screw it up. We need to go back to distributed decision-making, not concentrated decision-making. So they're failing, but between now and the election in, in November, it's really scary. The Democrats... And, and the World Economic Forum are in exactly the same position, and they're starting to do things that are exceptionally dangerous. Ukraine is using weapons of multiple launch rocket systems sent to them by the United States to attack the largest nuclear power plant in Europe. And that's really scary, okay? This would be like Chernobyl, yeah. but 10 times worse. I mean, uh, there are things that are going on now that are so spooky and so scary, regardless of how you feel about Trump. The idea of the, the, the FBI going in and seizing papers from him and then lying about what they seized. These are the same guys that spent $40 million on an investigation into Trump about the Russiagate thing. And they knew it was fraud from the very beginning. So there's really some spooky, spooky things. And, and your prime minister wants to do the same thing to Canadian farmers yeah. that uh, the Netherlands did and Italy did to the the farmers there. 
and and the reaction quite bluntly if if you think the truckers uh made it stink the farmers are going to make a real stink uh we're seeing scary things now do you have any idea when the dutch government forces these farmers out of business who gets the land uh, well, I would assume the crown does or some version of that. It's going to a subsidiary, the World Economic Forum, and they're going to create a multiplex for I illegal immigrants. OK, all, all of this stuff is planned. None of this is an accident. Uh, do you know who Harari is? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the author. Okay, that's that Klaus Schwab's sidekick. Uh, do you know what he talks about you and me? Do you know how we're described? You mean Yuval Harari? Is this the Harari you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I've read his books, so I could speculate on his sort of projections of our our bionic future. But what do you what do you think? What are you saying? Well, he talks about two things. He talks about transhumanism, which means he he wires us us up, and we become uh computers in human forms but he talks about useless eaters now that's a really scary term right i mean when, yeah. when somebody talks about useless eaters whose job is it to determine who the useless eaters are yeah well at the end of the day mine if it comes down to that i will determine how useless of an eater i am that's it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's that's where that stops. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh man, there's so much here I want to pull on. So first of all, question about the motives of the WEF. And is this just hubris, Bob? Is it just ego? Is it just human nature to want and crave more power? Is that is that the underlying motivation for this when you say, you know, what they're after is control, right? And they'll gain it through a mixture of fear based narratives like COVID and uh, control of the resources like agriculture and energy. You're, right you're absolutely correct. And there's a YouTube video of Bill Gates talking about having made a thousand percent return on vaccine. Now, what is obscene about listening to Bill Gates chortling about making a thousand percent return on an investment? Sorry, did you say what is obscene about it? Yeah, there's something very obscene about it uh, on its face. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I could list a handful of things, but it's uh, it raises a lot of questions, to say the least. I mean... No, no, no. It's simple. Bill, how much money do you need? Right. Okay. When you've got a guy who is the richest person in the world for 10 or 15 years, and now he's three or four or five or something like that. Sure. When you get that kind of money, there's been a concentration of wealth that has never happened like this before in history. Mm -hmm. And it's a result of globalization. But these people know no ends to their greed. They want more and more and more and more. And when you've got $50 billion, you think, I'm not only the richest guy in the world, I'm the smartest motherfucker on the yeah. entire block. Yeah. And, right. and it's scary. I, I went through high school in Fort Worth in, in the 1960s, and all of the people who had made money in the east texas oil fields their kids went to the high school that that i went to in in fort worth and these 15 and 16 year old kids were driving jaguars and porsche and corvettes and t-birds and they all thought they were the smartest people in the world now the funny thing is none of them had earned a dime Okay, daddy gave it to them, mm. but the mere fact of having money made them believe that, that they were somehow more worthy than the rest of us. Yes. And these guys, uh, when you talk about Soros and Gates and Elon Musk, these guys get nuts, okay? We need more and more and more power. 
Now, uh, Lord Acton in 1871 said, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And we're there. And what these guys want to do is very scary. And the beauty is we know they're always going to fail, but how much damage are they going to do first? Let's take a look at Germany. Do you realize that Germany may not exist as, as a country in six months? I got some questions about that. Yeah, that's interesting that you mentioned that. Now, is that due to energy dependence or what's what's your thought process? Well, it's not due to energy dependence. So, okay, here's what's very important for your listeners to understand. There's no shortage of energy. We didn't run out of energy. We had tons of energy. Canada would love to ship oil to the United States and the Keystone Pipeline, but they're not doing it because the president of the United States, who just happens to be senile, uh, voted against it. So uh, uh, on March 1st, uh, the Europeans in the United States announced sanctions on Russia, and they weren't going to buy energy from, from Russia. Now, the thing that's totally insane is Europe needs Russia, but Russia doesn't need Europe. Mm -hmm. So Russia has done a great job of modifying who they sell things to. And Germany, that got 55% of their natural gas from Russia, is screwed. Yeah. And, and the amazing thing is, and we may have already passed the go no go point. Okay. You understand what natural gas that you've got. Um, reservoirs that you fill with natural gas during the season you don't need the natural gas and then you use it during the winter yeah there is some point in in august or september or october that no matter what happens you're going to have people freeze and i i think we're very close to that point if we haven't already passed it now what could germany do tomorrow to eliminate the natural gas align with russia no turn on Nord Stream too sure okay okay aligning with russia would actually make sense okay russia wanted secure borders okay 30 years ago, the United States said, we're not going to move NATO one inch to the east. That's how they got the Germans to reunify East Germany and West Germany. They lied. In 2014, the United States spent $5 billion having an illegal coup d'etat because the current government in Ukraine leaned towards Russia Yep. And the United States wanted them to lean towards Europe. So we overthrew the legitimately elected government. The eastern provinces of Donbass said, we don't want to be any part of that. So we're going to be independent. Okay. People think that Russia somehow invaded or took control, which is absolutely not true. There was a conflict that went on from 2014 to 2016. And the Germans and the French and the English and the Americans realized we can't have this. This could create World War II. So we're going to have a peace conference. And there was a peace conference. And the agreement was called Minsk II. And Minsk II provided for Ukraine government that happened to be illegal to get into direct negotiations with Donbass and to not attack Donbass. Well, they, they took their lead from the United States, and if it was okay for the United States to lie about agreements, Poroshenko decided that it was okay for Ukraine to lie about agreements, and they did, and they never implemented MIPS II. Germany never said anything. France never said anything. The UK never said anything. And in February, they were on the verge, Ukraine was on the verge of, of attacking Donbass, and the Russians knew about it. This is a war that is totally meaningless. The United States has no interest in whatsoever. And the sanctions are going to destroy 
the EU, and we're going to see it, it it's going to become very obvious in the next two or three months. As temperatures cool down, yeah, I completely agree with that. We haven't even begun to see what the energy crisis will become. And I think the same with the food crisis. Now, you mentioned something earlier in the interview, Bob. You said Putin had gone through the same, was it young leaders within the World Economic Forum program as Trudeau, um, as uh, I can never remember her name, but the Prime Minister of New Zealand, Juanica, Juani, I can't remember. Doesn't matter. Anyways, my point is this. If I am, I'm watching this situation unfold like everybody else, like you are, and I'm asking the question, how do I step outside the chaos? How do I protect my personal sovereignty? And the answers that come to me immediately, well, I need, um, you know, independent source of energy, food and wealth, right? And so for me, that looks like leaving downtown Vancouver. I live in a smaller town closer to um, local agriculture, right? Um, I, I have my own bank, right? I, I, for the last 10 years, have been slowly accumulating my gold reserves, right? And I will continue to do so. I like being my own, my own reserve, right? If you're looking at Putin's actions, he's doing the exact same thing on a colossal scale. He's securing energy, food, and wealth in the form of gold, right? Um, and he's arming himself against the program, I suppose, that you're outlining the World Economic Forum is is pushing forward. I guess my question is like, you know, who's holding the power card right now? Uh, on one hand, you've got sort of historic- Bingo, bingo. Okay, uh, you are absolutely correct. And, and that's one of the best questions I've ever been asked. The sanctions are so stupid. And I didn't discover this yesterday. Anybody who wants to come to my website, go to the archives on March 1st. I was the first person in the world to say the sanctions are going to destroy the EU, NATO, and the United States. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Now, the really funny thing is, who is it who gets benefits from the sanctions? Uh, who benefits from the sanctions? Right now, it looks like China to me. They're China to... and Russia. And Russia, yeah. Okay. Russia's making money hand or fist. I've seen things. I, I mean, uh, I, I, I have foreseen the future for 15 or 20 years, and it scared me for 15 or 20 years. And I've done my very best to warn people who come to my website, and I'm seeing things that scare the shit out of me. Somebody sent me a copy of their electricity bill in the UK, and their bill went from 99 British pounds a month, okay, call it 125 bucks US, it increased tenfold. Mm. Now, how many people can actually afford that? And there, that sets into effect other things. There is a group in the UK with 75 thousand members right now who have said as of the first of October, we're not going to pay our power bills. Really? Interesting. Now that gets scary. And of course, exactly the same thing that's happening in China. Okay. Where 60% of the economy is real estate and you take out a mortgage before the place is built. So there are banks in China that have said, you know, we're not going to give you access to your money. And of course, all of the people who have taken these mortgages out on apartments that have never been built saying, OK, fine, we won't pay our mortgages. We are going to have a crisis like unlike any in history. And quite bluntly, I, I think the power is going to shift. 5,000 kilometers to the east, I think that's going to result in the destruction of Europe. And the power is going to be between India and China and Japan and Russia. Why, why does Japan factor into that group? Because where they are geographically. Okay. Okay. Uh, Japan had agreed with the sanctions in the last couple of days. They quietly 
drop the sanctions. Yeah, I mean, that's at the end of the day, I guess that's the debate, right? It's 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 Western sanctions versus Eastern assets at the end. I mean, that's the battle that's being fought right now. We have food, energy and, and gold over here, and then we have economic sanctions over here. And you know, actually, it's it's a little bit different than that. It's a debt based financial system compared to a resource based financial system. I, I think the yeah, okay. uh, corporate income tax, highest corporate income tax in Russia, I think it's 15 percent. The West has had it far too easy for far too long, gone into debt that can never be paid. And we need a reality check. And I'm going to tell you that everything that I've seen since the invasion of Ukraine uh, in, indicates that the West is getting dumber and the East is getting smarter. Now, I don't know how China is going to get past the real estate issue. I think that's very serious. But the fact is, they do have a lot of gold, and they're working with the Russians, and they're coming up with the multipolar uh, economic world power system, which I think makes a lot of sense. The United States, uh, I, I mean, unfortunately, the sanctions have proven it. Uh, I, I cannot think of a single leader in Europe. Uh, perhaps the guy that just got elected in Hungary, but I am not seeing any leadership in Europe. I think Trudeau's a blithering idiot. I think the woman in in uh, New Zealand, the Prime Minister of Australia, these people turned into total Nazis. What one of the things that, and, and of course, as Canadian, I'm very interested in your point of view. Remember the woman who helped organize the trucker strike? Yeah. To Merrill Lynch. They yeah. kept her in jail with no bond and they were releasing murderers. I mean, is that anything other than petty? I, I think it's it's a very public political criminal, uh, is what she's become. I mean, you know, it's interesting though, Bob, and, and what's most troubling to me about that scenario, and it goes the same thing as when citizens' bank accounts were seized for participating in what was a completely above board and legitimate GoFundMe campaign. Uh, something they might've done the week prior and the week prior, but suddenly this time, right? There were massive and unprecedented and undiscussed consequences where, you know, you could be 18 year old kid, love what you're seeing and the unity of the country that was occurring and you donate 20 bucks to this campaign. And suddenly your financial assets are seized and there's, there was no discussion. There was no debate, right, within any level of our of our parliament. And I see that as a trajectory, right? It's like that happened, and too frequently we look at an event like that and like, oh, it's a static event. It happened in response to this thing that was occurring. But I'm like, no, no, no. We just opened the door, right? Now the, the precedent's been yeah. set. So what's next? You know, it's always easier the second time, never harder, right? And I'm a well, bit concerned uh, about the apathetic uh, response from a lot of Canadians about that. That that was a test, okay. Uh, Justin is absolutely part and parcel of the World Economic Forum, and the Assistant Prime Minister of Canada. The same thing is true of her. she went through that uh, world uh, young global leaders. Uh, they know what's coming. They know what they've been promised, and they are kind of a uh, stalking horse for uh, to see what they can get away with. I mean, the, the whole COVID thing is absolutely amazing to me because now everything that we were told, they turned around and said, oh, by the way, you know, masks didn't work, the vaccine didn't work, the vaccines are dangerous, lockdowns didn't work, we screwed the kids by keeping them out of school and we destroyed the economy, but it was all done in good faith. Right, yeah. Okay, I want to I want to wrap this up with something I've heard you say, and you said it during this interview, and I heard you say this on Palisades recently. It's an optimistic outcome, Bob. You have said this is the intention of the W of, of the WEF. It's control, it's power. It's essentially a shutdown of the economy in exchange for that control and power. 
but it's not going to work. And I want to focus on the, but it's not going to work part. So you've written about this in, in your book. What's, what's making you, are you optimistic? And, and if so, how come and why? And how do we okay. resolve? Okay. I, I am a student of history. Okay. I read a lot. Uh, you know, I run the website. I, I've got to read 100 or 150 articles a day. So I'm pretty literate without having a particular agenda. And history books are filled with the elite coming up with these really great ideas. And you see how stupid they are. Uh, go back to how World War I started. A, a minor Austrian uh, royalty was assassinated when people were getting assassinated all the time. And all of a sudden, 25 million people are dead. And the Treaty of Versailles, okay, was so one-sided against Germany that it created World War II. I mean, uh, you go through any history book, you are not reading about the brilliance of leaders. You're reading about the stupidity of leaders. Let's take Afghanistan. The United States, the most powerful country in the world, the richest country in the world, spent 20 $2.3 trillion and 20 years, and they were fighting a bunch of goat herders. And look who won. And we're still, we cannot say we had no business in the future there in the, in the first place. And I'll say it. Uh, when, when somebody invites you to a party at the graveyard of empires, don't take your gun because you're going to get your ass kicked. The elites always believe they're going to win. They always fail. And I to give credit for that to uh, the fourth turning, which everybody should read. It's an absolutely brilliant book. And we focus on this idea of, of a move to totalitarianism. But in fact, in the book, they say, but people wake up, they pay attention to what's going on, and they vote for freedom. Now, the farmers in the Netherlands are voting for freedom. The farmers in Italy are voting for freedom. If Trudeau wants to see how stupid he can get, he can have the same thing all over Canada. They're going to fail. These are stupid people. Their objectives are evil. And they're going to lose. And that's a good thing. I agree with you. I, you know, I have an optimistic bent myself and I, I will bet all day long on human ingenuity over the long term. And I, okay, but in the near term, Bob, uh, basics, right? I'm looking at this as the father of three young kids. So I have both super long time horizons and immediate time horizons because I got to pay the mortgage and feed the kids tomorrow. I'm always looking for ways to protect my personal sovereignty as the world may continue to descend into unpredictable chaos. Maybe the rest of this decade, maybe longer, maybe shorter. I want to exit that as much as I possibly can and remain independent from the events of our broad economy, our political leaders, and any sort of culture wars that may emerge. And I've got a variety of strategies that, that I employ. How can people, Bob, retain or gain some sovereignty and make sure that whatever occurs, right, they've they've retained their sovereignty through this. Uh, the most important thing is to learn to think and to educate yourself. This concept that you can go to listen to a guru or an expert, we listen to Fauci. And Fauci said, you don't need a mask. Yeah. And then he said, well, you do need a mask. And then he said, well, you need a mask and a face shield. And then he said, but two masks would be better. And then he said, well, you don't really need two masks. There are no experts. There are no gurus. There are people who have learned to think for themselves. But the most important thing is you are responsible for your own decisions your own family, your own neighborhood, and you've got to do what is good for you. If you are going to count on the leadership 
of your country to tell you what to do, they are going to lead you down a primrose path. I happen to think that Canada is run by a blithering idiot. I happen to think the United States is run by a blithering idiot. And I'm, I'm not by myself. There's lots of people who agree with me. It's end of empire for the Western debt-based system. I'm not exactly certain what's going to come after this. I just know we could not possibly get any dumber than we are right now. I'm going to give you a statistic, and it's a statistic that scared me so much that I want to share it with your listeners. In the United States, they were looking at 12-year-old to 18-year-old children. And in 2020, there were four children in that age group who came down with myocarditis. In 2021, there were another four children who came down with myocarditis. Now, uh, myocarditis is a heart inflammation. It's a permanent condition. Uh, a third of people are going to die within five years from it. And of course, it's a tragedy. In 2022, 2,236 children have come down with myocarditis so far. And that's so scary. You, you've got to stop listening to the experts. You've got to start making decisions for yourself. Uh, Fauci came down with COVID twice. Biden came down with COVID twice. The head of Pfizer came down with COVID twice. And the one thing that all of those people share is they were all double shot, double boosted, okay? So you've got to take responsibility for yourself. People are going to lie to you all the time. You've got to do what makes sense. And to, to do that, you've got to educate yourself. Well, and I'll, I'll, I'll add something on to that because I have some personal experience within this. And, and I uh, developed myocarditis, Bob, last winter. So we're talking like, November, December. Um, I got the vaccination because I agreed to the social contracts, right? We are being held in lockdown. If we participate, right, in the, the vaccination program, we will reopen the economy. Now, I've never had a flu shot in my life because I trust my immune system, but I've had many vaccinations for measles and mumps and other stuff. And so you know, and I trust science and, and vaccinology. Uh, however, right, first of all, the government broke that social contract, right? We hit something like 93% vaccination in Canada, and then they shut down the economy and locked us down again. Uh, for that reason alone, I would have never gotten a booster. But then in November, I started feeling terrible on a daily basis. I couldn't get through a workout without feeling dizzy, like I was going to pass out or vomit. Um, my joints ached, everything about me, and I'm a healthy person. You know, I do triathlons, like I eat, I know when something's not right. It's not like I live with some chronic illness and I don't, I can't tell. Like I know when something's not right. And so I did a full spectrum cardiac exam, had the to MRI, discovered I developed significant heart inflammation. It is impossible to point to the cause of that, but I can say what changed in my life, right? I've never had this issue before. Something changed recently that caused a significant shift in my biochemistry. And in terms of it being incurable, I, I would counter that in saying, thankfully, I have more financial resources than most. And I was able to build an amazing team of cardiologists and MD and ND and integrative doctor. But I went all out, like full core press on this and a variety of peptide protocols, NAD drips. I mean, I was spending a shit ton of money, Bob, uh, just to combat and supercharge my mitochondria to reduce its inflammation. Thankfully, it has resolved. I've done two triathlons in the last two months, got a third in a month, and I'm feeling good. But like I said, like I have a lot of resources that a lot of people don't have, and I take this shit super seriously, and I knew immediately when something was wrong because I usually feel really good. So when I don't feel good, I know, you know. Um, 
it's it's legit. I only say that to say that if if you're a viewer and you're watching this and you're dealing with this, like there are things you can do, right? And feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to share with what I did because I it's it's real. It's real. So, anyways, um, <laughs> a bit of a rant, but like, you know what I mean? It's it's uh it's it's what's occurring. So yeah, yeah. Okay, Bob. Uh this was awesome. I want to thank you for your time. Um, it was great having you on and it's been too long, like, yeah, a decade since we, we hung out and, and saw each other. So, um, I really do appreciate it. I do. Well, it's been a great pleasure and I appreciate you giving me the time. And what I'm trying to do is help people, but, um, uh, you're absolutely correct there. It's a bright future ahead. However, we have to change who we listen to. 100%. 100%. Okay. Bob, once again, thank you. We'll do it again soon. Good deal. Thanks, Jay. All right. All right. Thank you for watching this interview. Now, three things before I let you go. Number one, I publish a weekly newsletter and I love writing it. I share my biggest takeaways and action items from the conversations that I have on this channel. In addition, my thoughts on current events, economic events, political events, and you can subscribe for free. Just hit the pinned comment right beneath this video or just go to jmartin.club and you can subscribe on the website. I'd love to have you join the team. Number two, ad revenue from this channel is donated to an organization that is super close to my heart called Zero Ceiling. Now, Zero Ceiling's mission is to end youth homelessness. And the way they do this is by giving at-risk urban youth the opportunity to relocate to beautiful wilderness areas and then provide them with supportive housing, career training, and just generally positive influences on their life. I love what they do. Check them out if you're interested. And number three, if you prefer to listen to my content as opposed to watch it, you can find me wherever you listen to your podcasts. Just search for The Jay Martin Show. All right, thanks again.